Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Houston and in this video I'm going to be walking you through how to use our Torchmate 4400 CNC plasma cutter table. This is the first of our CNC cutter tables and although it's the easiest to use, it is also the most limited to use. This machine can cut mild steel, stainless steel, as well as aluminum sheets with sizes up to 4 feet by 4 feet by 1 and a quarter inch thickness. When using this machine, be sure to be 100% positive of what material you're cutting, as cutting the wrong type of material can pose a hazard condition for not only yourself, but as well as others around you in the space. To power on the machine, come to the back of the table and flip on the plasma cutter itself. Then, move over to the side of the table and switch on the CNC motor. Finally, head to the front of the table and turn on the computer with the button on the back. Once the power sequence has been finished, Wait for the computer to automatically pull up the embedded virtual machine design program. This is what you will use to run the machine as well as create jobs for your part. Let's go over some of the different controls you have on the VMD program. On the left, we have the table map. This shows the grid we will be working with as well as a couple buttons we will go over in further detail later in the training. On the map, we have the yellow and blue grid system. The yellow grid represents the size of the table and the blue grids represent the coordinates of the table where the torch can move to. Below the map is the datum button. This is the very first button you must press after turning on the machine. The torch mate will automatically start homing itself to the frontmost left side and then notify you when it has completed. Next to the datum button are the set program zero and go to program zero buttons. These work in relation with the grid on the map to move your program around the table. Set program zero moves the part you created to the spot the torch is currently sitting on the table. And go to program zero will move the torch to where your program zero is currently set. On the top of the screen are the job creation buttons. These are where you will go to set up and create your jobs for the machine to cut. This includes custom nested CAD drawings, predetermined shapes from the shape library, as well as further setup settings in the job setups tab. On the right, we have the jog controls. These are the arrows in the X, Y, and Z directions. X and Y will move you along the table, while the Z jog will move the torch head up and down. If you tap and hold at the base of the arrow, the cutter will jog slowly. Sliding your finger along the arrow will increase the speed. You will want to use the jog controls to move the plasma cutter out of the way to load your stock. On the far right of the screen is the dashboard. This is where you can see the machine actively communicating with the user. You can also get active readouts of the voltage in relation to what it is set to, as well as the feed rate and cut timer. You want to pay attention to the plasma cut counter. Our shields are only good for about 100 cuts, so be sure to inspect the shield as part of your pre-cut inspection. Here is an example of what a good versus bad shield assembly for the torch looks like. On the other side of the jog controls are the cut parameters. You must change these settings in accordance to what shield you are using, as well as what type of material you are cutting. The correct settings can be found on the Torchmate SOP tables on the side cart next to the cutter. In order to determine what shield size you need for your cut, refer to these tables. Each page is designated to a shield size and can be found at the top left of the page. The tables will tell you the minimum and maximum thickness allowed for each size. Sometimes the shield installed will not always match what you need for your cut. In order to determine what size shield is currently on the torch, find the engraved marking on the side of the shield. And lastly, on the bottom of the screen are the main controls for the table. The active or dry run button on the far left designates whether the torch will begin to cut the job or do a preview of what is to be cut. The run job and stop buttons will start and stop the job. The stop job can be used at any time during a cut to immediately stop the job if a problem arises. The reset button on the far right is used to reset the program back to its starting point if you were to have to stop a job for whatever reason. With the Torchmate, you have two options for creating a program. You can either choose a predetermined shape with custom dimensions within the machine settings, like a trapezoid shape or gusset, or upload a custom CAD drawing. Before getting started on creating your desired job, we need to first check a couple things. 
You want to make sure that the water level is at the correct height before cutting. We use tap water in the bed, and it should be almost touching the top of the slats. Next, make sure you have the correct file type if uploading a personal CAD drawing. For custom CAD drawings, we use DXF file types uploaded to Mastercam to build toolpaths. We will get more into how to build these toolpaths later into the training. Once these are verified, you must then verify the correct size nozzle or shield for your cut. Let's take a look at the nozzle assembly to get a better idea of what you're working with. To properly install the nozzle onto the torch, follow these easy steps. First, take a clean electrode and insert this into the torch head. You will know this is properly inserted as if when you let go, it springs back to you like so. Next, take your swirl ring and your nozzle and put them together like so. They should stay together like this. Then, take your retaining cap, drop this into the top of the retaining cap. It should come out the bottom like this. Then, take your retaining cap and sc screw this onto the torch. Next, take the shield and screw this onto the bottom of the retaining cap. Finally, take the wire and attach it to the side clamp here. The shield is the interchangeable nozzle on the torch. We have four different types of these shields, a precision cut, 40 amp, 60 amp, and 80 amp shields. Refer to the table in the Torchmate SOP on the side cart next to the plasma cutter for information on what shield to use in accordance to your metal. You must also determine the proper amperage for your cut. This information can be found on the Torchmate SOP tables provided for you. Other settings to pay attention to on this table are things like the pierce and cut height, the pierce delay, as well as the feed rate and the kerf width. All of these can be dialed in on our virtual machine design software here on the Torchmate and verified on the Torchmate SOP tables provided. First, let's figure out the size of our stock. Remember, this machine has a maximum size of four feet by four feet by one and a quarter inch. Here at the Makerspace, we employ a 35 pound rule. This rule states that if your stock exceeds 35 pounds, you must have a friend help you lift your stock. If you and a friend cannot lift your stock and is too heavy, speak to an MST. We have means of lifting very heavy equipment. Before lifting your stock, be sure to rent a pair of work gloves from our tool room. These are free for you to use and are for your safety when lifting stock. When you're lifting, be sure to use proper grip. You want to lift with your legs and grip the stock from the top. Do not slide your hand up and down the stock, as doing this can result in cuts on your hand from burrs in the metal. When placing onto the machine, be sure not to crush your fingers on the slats here. You want to center the stock on the table as best as possible, and when you place the stock, do not slide across the table, as doing this can damage our slats over time. Due to the nature of this machine, you actually do not need to clamp your stock to the table when doing your cut. This is due to the machine using a plasma arc to create the cut, and it does not create any sideways directional forces. Once your settings have been input for your cut, it's time to start building your job. First, we will go over simply cutting a piece from the shape library. To get started on this, click on the shape library button and select a shape from this library. For this demonstration, we will be doing a flange. Select your part and hit OK. The program will then bring up the dimensions tab where you can edit how large you want your part to be. This is also where you can adjust your lead-ins as well as feed rate. Lead-ins are the length of an essential warm-up of the torch before it starts your actual cut. We usually keep these around a quarter inch, but depending on the thickness of your metal, you may need more or less. Speak with an MST if you have any questions regarding how long your lead-in should be. The feed rate is determined by looking at the Torchmate SOP and finding the optimum and production settings. Optimum settings are those where your cut will come out the cleanest with their suggested feed rate, and production will be the fastest cut, but might not come out as clean. Again, speak to an MST if you have any questions regarding a proper feed rate for your cut. Because we are using mild steel at a quarter inch thickness, our feed rate will be 45. Next, input your desired dimensions and hit OK. Save this under an original name and hit Save. Now, navigate to Select Job and click on the part you just uploaded. Most of the time this will end up at the very top, but make sure you find the correct part that you had just made. Select this part and hit OK. Now that you understand how to use a shape from the shape library, let's take a look at how to upload a custom CAD drawing. 
Once you're back on the computer, you will want to open up Mastercam. This is the software we will be using to build the toolpaths for your design. Once the program has opened, navigate to File and then Open. Here you can find the DXF file that you would like to cut on the machine. Next, you'll want to highlight the entire design by clicking and dragging over it, and then moving to the Transform tab and selecting the Move to Origin button. Next, you'll need to select a point at which you want to move to the origin. To now view the design, go to the Views tab and select Fit. This will bring you to the design at the origin. Now that we're set up at the origin, you can now start building your toolpaths. First, navigate to the Machine tab at the top and select Mill. Here you will see the Torchmate 4400 machine. Select this machine to get started. If the machine does not automatically show up, select Mill and Manage. From here, find the Torchmate machine file, select it, and hit Add. Then, hit the green check. Now the Torchmate machine will be under the Mills tab when selected. To start building your toolpaths, select the Contour button. You will first want to select the interior pieces of your design. And in this instance, it would be the A and the P cutouts in the middle there. Once selected, hit the green check. Now we will need to select the tool we will be using. Navigate to the Tool button, and then click the Select Library tool. Then click the folder at the top. You will then need to scroll all the way down until you find the pre-populated Torchmate files. For our cut, we are using the 40 amp torch head. Select this one and hit Open. You will then see a list of all the materials as well as the thicknesses that this machine can cut with the 40 amp head. For ours, we are cutting mild steel at a quarter inch thickness, so we will select this one. Next, you will want to select the tool within the box and then hit the green check. Now you can see we have created interior tool paths for the inside parts of our design. All that is left is creating the outside tool path. To do this, hit Contour and select the outside of the design. Then hit the green check. You will then need to reselect the tool, but this time it will be pre-populated within the box. Select this tool and hit the green check. You will now see the toolpath has been generated for the outside of the design. But, in this instance, the in and out leads for the cut are on the inside of the design, which is not what we want. In order to change this, simply go to Geometry under the second toolpath that we had created and click on it. From here, right click the text that says Chain 1. You will then click Change Side. What this will do is flip the in and out leads from cutting on the inside of the design to the outside of the design. To regenerate our toolpath, navigate to the top where the tool with the little X next to it is and select this. This will regenerate our toolpath and now you can see that all of our toolpaths now work out for the design we are trying to cut. Once you are satisfied with your design and its toolpaths, then navigate up to the G1 box and click on that. Click the green check. Select Yes, and then save this file onto your flash drive. Mastercam will then open up Code Expert. You can close this program when it is opened because it is not needed for the next steps. Now let's move back over to the Torchmate. Once back onto the Torchmate program, we will then want to set our cut parameters before doing anything else. These can be found on the tool cart next to the Torchmate.
If these are not set correctly before each cut, you can risk an improper cut as well as damaging the torch. Once these have been set, we can then input our custom CAD drawing. First, input your USB into the back of the computer. Then, navigate to Select Job, and then hit Browse. Here you will want to select the flash drive you had plugged in with your G-code on it, and select the G-code that you wish to cut. This will pre-populate the box with the design we created in Mastercam in the horizontal view. If for whatever reason you need to change the orientation of the design, click Job Setup, and change the rotation. With your program ready, we will now go into how to properly choose a spot on your stock to begin your cut. Before continuing, you will need to zero out your Z-axis. To do this, tap the Z-minus jog icon until the shield head is almost touching the surface of your stock. Be very careful when doing this. It is possible to go too far down to damage the torch. You will know you have gone too far down if the breakaway box changes from gray connected to yellow open. To remedy this, simply tap the Z plus jog icon until the breakaway condition changes back to connected. When you have the torch head close to the stock, select Job Setup. You will want to properly set the material thickness of your stock. To do this, click on Material Thickness and input your settings. Now click the Set button next to Top of Material. This will change the top of the material number to how high your stock is in relation to the torch. Now that we have our torch height set, you want to find a spot on your stock to begin your cut. To do this, use the jaw controls on the right side, labeled X and Y, and find a spot on your stock that is suitable for the cut. Once you have found your spot, click Set Program 0, and that will bring the part to where the torch is currently sitting. Before initiating the cut, you will want to do a dry run of the cut. To do this, simply toggle the button at the bottom to Dry Run, this will run the plasma cutter along the path of the cut without actually cutting anything. Doing this step ensures that your part will fully cut correctly without traveling off the metal stock. To run the job, click the green Run Job button. Once you have verified that your dry run fits on your stock, simply click the Dry Run button once again to turn it into the active run. When in this setting, the torch is active and will begin to cut if you were to click Run Job. Before beginning your cut, ensure that the UV shields are in place before operating as the bright light produced by the cutting head can permanently damage your eyes. These shields need to be completely surrounding the torch mate for not only your safety, but the safety of others in the room as well. Remember that even with the shields, you still should not stare directly at the light produced by the torch. Once proper safety conditions are met, start your cut by clicking Run Job. If at any point during your cut, you notice that the plasma cutter is doing something wrong, hit the stop button at the bottom to halt all operations for the plasma cutter. Once your cut has finished, jog the machine out of the way before trying to reach for your part. Once all of the cutting operations have been completed, you may now shut down the machine. First, click the shut down button on the VMD software. Then flip the switch to off on the CNC motor on the side of the table. Finally, move to the rear of the table where the plasma cutter is located and turn the switch to the off position on the back of the unit. You are now finished with the video tutorial for the TorchMate plasma cutter. Be sure to go online and check out our Canvas page and sign up for an in-person training with one of our MST staff members. Once finished, you will then have access to the machine. Thank you for watching. The passcode for the quiz is... Cutting with plasma and air.